this interesting uh, mix up with the scriptures all of a sudden. <laughs> um, and you know me, I'm pretty flexible. <laughs> so I just pocketed my sermon here, and we have a whole new sermon based on this interesting mix up on the scriptures here. Okay? Um, you read the right one, so you're all you're right. We had the wrong one listed up there, and then uh, the choir sang about both scriptures. I heard interesting. So I, I know I know we had the right one on tap, and I, I get why we had picked that. I'm not sure how we got the wrong scripture up there. Did you did you notice that scripture that was up there was more like the garden scene, yeah. right? Uh, so here Jesus is, and he said, "Father, um, if it possible, you know, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done." And I heard that echoed even in our uh, choir example today, but that wasn't your primary text. I, I know that was not the case. So, but God's working even in the mistakes, <laughs> even in a little blips. Because where are we at? Today, you know, I, well, as we've been working through these last 40 days in my appointment here, I've been thinking about how Jesus spent the last 40 days with his disciples. And Julie's been accusing me of having a bit of a messianic complex. Because you compare yourself with Jesus too much. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe I do a little bit. But I, but I think I do. I, when I try to do that, uh, I, I try to do that because I feel like I am not necessarily Jesus, but I am part of the body of Christ. I am a brother in Christ. Amen. And I'm here with the body of Christ. I'm part of you. I'm not trying to set myself apart other than to be with that one whom God sent to be with us. Today is the Ascension Sunday. It's the end of the 40-day journey that Jesus has post-Easter with the disciples. He has 40 days, the way Luke tells us. He doesn't quite tell us in his Gospel of Luke, but he is the author also of the book of Acts. And so he's telling us in the first chapters of Acts that over 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus was with us. In the resurrection. His resurrected body was with us, and he ate, ate with us, and he drank with us, and he healed with us, and he spent time with us, explaining everything that he was teaching about the kingdom, and explaining everything that he was teaching about what had been written about the Messiah. He was opening our minds to the scriptures. And that was in our text that we read just a few minutes ago. He was opening our minds to the scriptures. He is the very Word of God. Jesus is the very Word of God. I think that's actually our first fill in the blank. Is that right? Let's have it up there. Jesus equals the Word of God. John 1, 14. Can somebody look that up and read John 1, 14 for us? We got any Bibles out there? <laughs> about how that, that first part of John, some of you probably had the first part of John all memorized. So, in the beginning was the Word. word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And so that, when, when John's writing, he's talking about the second person of the Trinity. He's talking about the Son. And the Son is the Word. And when John's writing, he's writing it in Greek, and the fancy word uh, for Greek, uh, the Greek word for word is Anybody know? Logos. No, yeah, so we need Greek speakers out there. Logos. Oh, good, I can make it up. Uh, logos. 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 Logos is the Greek word for word. And, and so in the beginning was the logos is the, is the way that John would have written it. The second person, the logos of God. And the word became flesh because God so loved the world but didn't just stop at uh, having words, 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 like preachers give every Sunday. He didn't stop there, but he let the word come into the world. 
world so that it could put on flesh and become Jesus Christ. I'm reading this great book right now. It's called How We Decide. And I can't remember what the author is because I just two seconds ago thought about bringing the book up to us. But I'm reading this great book. It's about how we decide. So Google it and you'll figure out who the author is. And anyway, uh, this author is talking about uh, how our brains work and in tandem with our emotions in our lives. So how rationality on one hand and how emotion uh, comes to play as we make decisions. And when I think about rationality, I think about the logos of God. The logos, the word of God, the logos. From logos, we get logic, right? So we start thinking about rationality. And so the logic of God, if you will. Jesus is the logic of God. And that's our rational parts of our brains. But we, we, this book is fascinating because it says when we decide based on logic alone... We actually never get around to making decisions. And we, we work up, well, this, this car was this much, and this car is this much, and you know, if I get with you know, this navigation system, it'll cost this much. If I don't get with navigation system, we can, then, we can ask those questions all along. But we just bought Julie a car, so that's what I'm thinking about. It took her seven weeks to find out a car. And she was, she's so logical, you know, she's just working it through, working it through, working it through. And I finally said, you know, you just can't buy on the object. You gotta get to, that's what made me pick up this book, actually. We gotta get to some decision on this. You can't just buy a logic. Everybody else goes in there and gets the new car smell. Oh, I want this one, you know? <laughs> but you gotta work through the numbers and you're never gonna come to the decision. Then she see, finally, her, her logical mind, she said, I think I got it, you know, this is the car. I, I pick up the phone, I start making the calls, I ordered this car for us, and, or for Julia. Uh, she stops me and says, yeah, get the other one. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, hold on a second. You know, I, 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 but it takes both, right, to come to decisions. It takes both the rationality and both our you know, emotional responses to come to the decisions. It takes both our brain and our hearts to come to the decisions. And so when God said he so loves the world, he's saying, you know, I don't want just the theologians to love me. I don't want just the theologians to get me, to have this knowledge. It's more than just the rational thinkers. It's everybody. Everybody has to love me. You don't just love me with your brain. You love me with your heart. And so God sent the word into the world to be made flesh. And then it's more than just, it's more than just our rationality, but it's also our hearts as well. <coughs> Let's have that next one like, because I forgot what I'm doing. <laughs> See, this is how I do it. I, you know, I, I, I keep track. You don't know. Maybe some of you realize this. So I have it all memorized. You think, wow, he's got a great brain. The truth is, I follow the film of life. That's how I know where I am. <laughs> you are witnesses. You are witnesses of these things. You come to see this. You come to experience yourself. You're witnesses to these things. Jesus said to the disciples, listen, it's not just all about going off to seminary and reading a bunch of books. It's about being in mission and ministry to the people. It's not just about you know, learning what words to say and when to say them. It's about doing those words in the world and when to do them. And so I am the Word of God become made flesh. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. And He's come to dwell among us. And then He came back to dwell among us. And He says, I'm going to teach you everything there is to know about what those scriptures say because we're going to go and do it. He, when He gave His first sermon, He opened up the book of Isaiah and He read in that part, I have come to set the oppressed free. To set... To give liberty to those who are in prison. To help the blind to see. And then he said, today, he closed the book up, sat back down, and he said, today, the scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing. I've come to do all these things. So it's not just about, I've come to say all these things, but I've come to do all these things. You all have been inspired by something that... You inspired me to do that first day I was here and send a benediction. It's my turn to give a benediction. I got no idea what to say. What do I say to these people? What good words do I have to say to these people? And then God stuck it in my head and my heart, and I can't stop saying it. You've been to church. Now go be the church. Be the church. 
So what it's all about, I only got one sermon. That's it. That's the one I've been in every Sunday. It's like this, we have the Word of God, we have the Word of God in our scriptures on the day, and then how do we become the Word of God in the world? How do we become, how do we take that Word of God, not just in our, heart, in our heads, but into our hearts, and become the Word of God in the world? You know, that's another fancy word for you. I read these books, Fancy Nancy. Anybody read those books, Fancy Nancy? I read them to our kids. And she always tries to use our French words or uh, you know, bigger words to explain smaller things. So, you know, the, a fancy word for making it flesh is this word called vivification. Say it with me. Vivification. Oh my gosh. Okay. To, to vivify. Say that. To vivify. That really just means to bring to life. That fancy word is somewhere in the Book of Discipline. I read it. And, uh, you know, I've been reading my Book of Discipline all week long. <laughs> but it means to bring words, well, to bring something to life, to vivify. And we say, when we use it in our Book of Discipline, we're talking about bringing Scripture to life. We're talking about bringing the Word of God to life. We're talking about bringing the Word of God, whom God sent down in His only Son, and giving it flesh, and bring it to life. And even when we killed Him through our sinful ways, <coughs> God didn't let us stop there, because He vivified it again. He brought Him back, and for 40 days, He opened the books, and He shared the books, but He opened His life, and he shared his life and his heart, and we all need to see how God's word was becoming flesh, even in us. We began to witness that. We witnessed that as we shared food with one another, as we shared food with those who didn't have it. We witnessed that as we uh, offered money to put, to put petrol in tanks across the street. We witnessed that as we worked side by side with one another to change the world on top of a roof uh, in some cases and, uh, and with a towel rack in other cases and we work together and in that in our lives together we weren't just going to church we became the church we are the church we be the church in the world what's our next goal look like? <laughs> I don't have my stuck to iPod and pocket I have no idea where I'm They returned to Jerusalem with great joy. See, I'm going to be really stuck in this new church, okay? Uh, you know, you, you guys, they don't have the fancy screens. How am I going to preach there, right? <laughs> yeah. They don't have the fancy screens where we can fill in the blanks. I don't know. I'm going to have to have something that will happen in the bulletins, right? Now I'm like, go off and, okay, what's next? Sir? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the, you know, have anybody been to the University of Iowa Methodist Church before? What's the pulpit like there? Oh, don't remember? Okay, so you think this is high up, right? And you know why I don't stand behind this, right? Because I pitch it. You know, I grab onto it, I lean into it. <laughs> and they told me, you know, that's not the way to do it. So I have to, I'm nervous, so I have to come down and stand over here. It, University of Iowa Methodist Church, they don't like that. They have this big old pulpit. And it's, you know, it's at least this high, actually. It's twice as high as this. It goes way up. And I am, at, uh, what's my phobia? Heights. Heights. <laughs> but you don't have to stand behind it. Oh, yeah. They want me to stand up there. And it, oh, okay. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> We're probably watching this on YouTube right now. <laughs> The other bit, I mean, is they want, they like it all written out. And, you know, and I write notes out. But, uh, and, and, I, and I can write them. You know, I can write the sermons. But you know what's most, but for me, and I think for you, for all of us, what's most important is that we get to that point where the rubber hits the road. Um, you, you know, I've already used Greek in, in the sermon. <laughs> but that doesn't matter, right? What was the Greek word? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, good. But that doesn't really matter, okay? It doesn't matter what kind of fancy words we know. 
Uh, what was the other fancy word that we used? <laughs> Vivify. Right, right. It doesn't matter what kind of fancy words we know, but how we live out the gospel in the world. How we bring the gospel to people in the world. That's what's most important. That's where the rubber hits the road. And so whatever kind of eloquence I have, <laughs> that sounds like Paul, doesn't it? I can have all the eloquence in the world and speak like angels, but if I do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. So I could like have it all written out, and I could post that one on the internet in the text, and I could be standing up in the big pulpit, and I could be sharing it up, but if I don't encourage you to take the Word of God and get it in your heart and get it in your brain and have it in your mind. See, mind. I'm making a distinction between the mind and the brain here, okay? The mind is how we think, how we come to make decisions, and it's think that that book told me anything. It means both the heart and the brain, working together all the time. That's the mind. That's the decision-making apparatus. It's all those things in tandem. So what we need to do is help us get to that point so we can change hearts and minds or whatever. There you go. Have us all working together, both our the logic, the rational side, and our emotional side. We, it's scripture come alive. Jeremiah said, you know, I'm going to write the law not on tablets, but on your heart. And so it doesn't matter where, how high the pulpit is. If I don't do that, I'm just a noisy gong or playing a cymbal. So my whole style is always to help you live it out. To help us all together live it out. Live what out? The Word of God. So our goal in the United Methodist Church is to, we say, is to make disciples of Jesus Christ the transformation of the world. That's the whole purpose of a church. And what I found is, the best way to do that is using the Holy Scriptures. But the Scriptures don't just stay in the book. Where's the book? Here it is. The Scriptures don't just stay in the book. Because if they just stay in the book, they just stay right there. And they don't go anywhere. But the Scriptures don't just stay in the book. They are right there. salvation, and we're going to take God's word, and we're going to eat it. You are what you eat. That's what they tell me. You are what you eat. And Zephora is like uh, uh, chocolate this morning. <laughs> you are what you eat. But today we're going to be taking the very bread of life, and the cup of salvation, and the word, the logos, and the love of God to us. And we're going to be that for the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Your challenges this week, if you choose to accept them, are they up there? What are we talking about here? Okay. Reflect and pray. Hey, I'm going to be good. Reflect and play, pray about how you are vivifying Scripture this week. Reflect on it. Pray on it. How are you being Scripture to the world? Share your witness of repentance and forgiveness. How have you personally experienced God's forgiveness in your life? How have you repented from something you've gotten, you know, first you come and you figure it out, you've got a confession in your life. Oh my goodness, I had it so wrong, I have no idea. And I'm sorry, and I want to try to change things. And how have you received forgiveness in that? And share, witness to that. Share with somebody else about that. In your in humility. Because God has lifted you up. Just as God has lifted Jesus up on the 40th day, God lifts us all up with him. Return to church with great joy. We're going to go through a lot of stuff this week. We have lots of time to return to church this week. Every time we return to church this week, even when it comes on, let's see, Tuesday is our day. Our conference, church conference is Tuesday. Even when it comes on Tuesday, we're going to return with great joy. Whoa, there's a lot of time to return to church. Let's, let's back up a second. Tonight! Right? You got all the help you need? You got help you need? Yeah. You need more people to help? Always. What do we need? Always need more people. They're not going to overwhelm you. If I get all these people showing up with food, is that going to be fun? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Tonight, what we have a unique opportunity. We've got to have people, riders who are raising money for Haiti. And they're raising money for Haiti. They're going to be riding their bikes, not just to South Haven uh, tomorrow, but they're going to go all the way up from here to the Mackinac Bridge. Okay? That's kind of a long ride. 
We're going to take a week to do it, though. Uh, but there's 14 riders that are going to come, and we get a chance to host a, a meal. We're going to pack them up with carbohydrates because they need to do that. We're serving them spaghetti dinner tonight. It's 6.30, I think, I heard. And so there's some preparation happening about two hours before. So come return with joy. Help come on out to do that. Okay, and then also return to the church. But it's not just the building, is it? At 4.30 at the Surratt Nature Center. Is that right? I got the time right. Charlie and Davey are going to be celebrating Julie. And we can come and we can push joy. We can celebrate there. We get that great. So that's a place to return. So that's just a night, just a night. And then two, you know, so then Tuesday, we're going to ask you to come back. You know, now we're going over to Water Relief. It doesn't matter what building, because we are the church. We're going to go over to Water Relief. And they're going through some tough times there because they've got to go through a closure. And they need the brothers and sisters in Christ. And they need us to show them that we are connected. And it's not just we're connected because we say we're connected. We're connected because we are there connected. And they need us to love them with the Holy Scriptures. They need us there. So we're going to show up with joy. We're going to love one another that night. And then, Wednesday! There's going to be a bouncy house! I'm talking about a bouncy house! It gets so, and you know, it's going to be great because Nyler's going to jump on there with me. We're going to bounce on there. <laughs> bring the little ones. Bring everybody. Bring just if you just find somebody on the streets, bring them. You know, because there's lots. We're gonna come and come and share. We're gonna we're gonna be together. Pray for good weather. Yeah. And then on Sunday we're coming back here, and I'm not gonna be here. I'm not gonna be here, but we're all gonna be here. The Word is going to be here, and I'm in the Word, and you're in the Word, and we're in the Word together. Oh boy, now I sound like Jesus again. <laughs> I, I can't believe I quoted that, because that doesn't even make sense to me. <laughs> but we talked about it last week, and the best I can make out of it is to serve in one hand. You are me, you have shaped me, and I have shaped you, and God has shaped us together in Jesus Christ. And so we're all going to be here, it's going to be Pentecost. Not just uh, Good uh, Father's Day, but Pentecost Day. We're going to hear it from all of you. The Holy Spirit is going to be speaking from all of you. There's six of us. Is there six of us? Okay. So we give God praise. So that's how we can return to joy. All right. I, well, let's get, you guys are still hungry. Let's get to the bread. <laughs>